That's Tiger Woods, like, <laughs> stopping in the middle of his backswing there, Min Woo Lee. Just another example of how good he is, Paul. A lot of people can't do that, can they? They just, once they start that backswing, it's very difficult for them to stop. But he's pulled out of it and obviously distracted by a noise, perhaps in the little area behind the 18th tee. Well, he's got this shot called a stinger that he's stolen off Tiger Woods, which is this low two iron. <laughs> he's gone under the tree there. That is absolutely perfect. He knew that he had to be on the left-hand side of the fairway to get a good shot at this green. Instead of taking the big, long driver and having a rip at it. And using the camera in the fairway as well, you know, to roll a bit further left. He, he, a, a really good example of the shot-making skills that he has, I think. Well, he definitely has got a lot of those. That tree, significantly left there. Left there for a reason. Just to go around it, under it, or over it. That one just went round it. That was the Japanese player, Kanyaya. He's not a tall man, but I'll tell you what, he can take a rip at it. Well, like so many of these young fellas these days, fitness and uh, strength building is all part of the, the regime. And and Jared Felton from Western Australia. Only one under for the day. That will still be a top ten for him. Well, Jamie Arnold sitting tied eighth at the moment. That'll. That's how different this is. Jared's missed that. Jamie holds this. That makes a bit of a difference in the paycheck at the end of the day. Jamie to take himself to 13 under. Two under for the day. Well, well, it's a great way to finish. I think you might go and enjoy having just one or two beers before he heads back to Cronulla. Straight across the M7 here. Easy to get out to the Greater West Bruce, as it I told is. you earlier. Well, M7, uh, M2 and M5. Well, coming from the airport the other day, it was only an hour to get out here from the, other, the M5 and then onto the M7. So it's, uh, you know, a good distance west of CBD of Sydney, but it's easily accessible in that regard as we look at Jason Scrivener at the par 3 17th. 24 under par now, a six-shot lead, two holes to play, Paul. I think this is going to be a very enjoyable walk over the final two holes. Well, as a player, you don't want to let up, that's for sure. No. You want to keep the intensity in there, and that's a fine shot. Just working off the mound to the right. Teasing greens now. Believe it or not, you have to stay as boring as you possibly can as a golfer coming down the stretch. Until it's time to put the pedal to the metal. Well, this man had 24 birdies in the first three rounds of this golf tournament, the New South Wales Open. Lucas Herbert, he doesn't mind a birdie. And an eagle today on 12 to boot. Put that ball nice and high in his team. Bringing it high right to left. Well, three beautiful shots on there. Daniel Nisbet earlier, not having a great day, but as I've said before, what a great learning curve. He's in the last group on a Sunday. You need to figure out a lot about yourself. You're not too happy as soon as you finish, but when you jump in the car and you drive into the hotel, that's when you sort of go back through your round and see what you've done well and what you've done bad. and. That's how you improve yourself. Oh, I couldn't agree more. And I think Daniel Nisbet, who is, you know, we've discussed over the last couple of days what a significant talent he is, an un unfulfilled, un unrealised talent in some many, in many respects. But uh, he will learn a lot out of today. It won't feel like it initially. But <laughs> <laughs> well, Brett Coletta here, just creeping. As you can see, the ball just got into the bunker, flirting with it. Oh, sorry, Ben Heckles here. Sorry. Just below him. His feet. It's, 
Difficult shot. I guess he'd try and slide it and a bit from left to right ball coming from that sort of lie, would he? Yeah, absolutely. Well, he's cut, tried to cut one off there, but it's come out too good. We've seen a few over the back there, I think. They're getting fooled by the you know, six or seven flags there, the Australian flag that's flying. It's, it's, it's up, but I think they're hitting it a little bit lower into this green, and it's not getting hit by the wind. Yes, and uh, for Eccles, uh, who's currently 17 under par, so tied in second position now with Lucas Herbert. And this could be a very important par save if he's able to do it as we look at the leaderboard of Inmu Lee, Takumi Kanaya and Ben Eccles. And really we described this tee shot of his and the <laughs> low running stinger two iron that he turned around the corner here at the 18th. Well, he's hit his two on as far as Ben Eccles has hit his driver there. Maybe a bit further. So look at that. I like how he's, he's hitting a low shot here. He wants to run it up the tier. Probably the way that the Grey Marsh wanted you to play the hole. Oh, not a hard chip or a putt from there. And his golf coach, Richie Smith, on the bag over in Wellington. It was the first time ever. Richie sacked himself from being caddy. He's a better coach than he is caddy. But one of our finest coaches in the country, Richie Smith. One last look at uh, Takumi Kanaya from a fairway shot, at least, Paul, but I think it's not going to be the last we see of <laughs> this young man. A guy that can finish runner-up in his national open on the Japan Golf Tour as a teenager behind none other than Yuta Aikida, who's really one of the stars of the Japan Tour these days. He's clearly got some serious game. And well, he got lucky yeah. there. He did. And he certainly did. He had let two hands go off the club. And mounting left and right of this, this pin, so he can use the mounds. Move the ball back to the hole. And you're right, it won't be the last time we see him. It's a long career golf. Not like other sports that is, you know, can go for five or six or ten years. This this game can go for a long, long time. Jason Scrivener for birdie to go to 25 under par. It's probably not the number anybody picked this week. When you're on song, you're on song. Moving from his right to left. Still good effort. Still looking very, very composed, isn't he? As we've discussed, that's a, the, the stamp of a man, really. And a good solid par there, keeps him six ahead. Isn't that fantastic, Bruce? Look how seven close ahead, the seven crowds ahead, excuse are. Me. <laughs> the crowds are right on the edge of the green. That mm. is fantastic. Yeah, we're going to get a good opportunity to see that when the last group walk down the last, just that feel of a gathering around access to the golf course, access to the fairways. I think it's just one of the features of tournaments such as these where the public and the galleries can get up close and personal with the players. What's unique, you can't get close to professional athletes in the heat of the battle, but in golf you can play pro-ams with them. You know, this standing so close here, um, that's how we can be different to every other sport. You know, I would go and watch rugby league or soccer or, you know, any type of that sport, tennis. I've got to be a long way back. I don't get inside. And those People are standing 15 feet away from the hole. Well, the golf course has been great this week at Twin Creeks Golf and Country Club. It really has served up a really, really solid golf course. And Nisbet there tapping in. Might be overly happy with his week. Ben Nichols is hitting this shot and not me, you, Bruce, because it's not easy. Uh, certainly not me, but uh, as you described, you can see what he faces downhill from the edge of the green down to the flag very quick once it gets on the green. He's got the club face open. He's going to fly it all the way there. Oh, always a tough one, that one. Coming out of that, you either bump and run it into the, the cooch and the down slope there and run it down there or you land it on. And that's part of golf. It's a, it's a decision making game that you have to make a decision and you know, am I going to try to get another hole? Am I going to be heroic and try to get this close and save myself a dollar um, on the last green? 
And then we leave with about seven or eight feet, maybe 10 feet of fringe to putt through here and then onto the green, which is fairly quick down to the hole. So pace a key issue, as it always is in putting, but perhaps more so in this putt. Well, going through the golf trade program, the high performance program. Some access to big amateur events and some big professional events. And the US Junior Championships last year. Go, go, go. The speed on that one. Still a top 10 at the moment. System NG currently playing the LPGA's CME Tour Championship in Florida. Well, this is what you dream of. Get on the last hole. You've got a seven shot lead. He's just going to rip a driver at it. Trying to move it off the bunker. And like he has all week, he's driven it on a dime and a long way down. He mightn't see that he's He's that excited about it, but I'm sure underneath his heart is pumping. Daniel Nesbitt, tee shot on the last. He certainly doesn't leave anything on the tee. No, he's got a he's got a very aggressive approach to the game, a very aggressive swing, and. Uh, He'll come out of this week. He might not feel it at the moment, as we've discussed, but he'll come out of this week so much better for it. And next time he gets into that position, Paul, he would have learned from today and hopefully will benefit from it. Lucas Herbert. Now, this is a man that can give it a hit. Oh. He's got an eye and just probably going to try and turn it around the corner, just a bit like when Wu Lee did just a few moments ago. Yeah, it's good play because he seriously could run out of driving room here. And this is just a smart play and you know, once upon a time he would have taken driver there and tried to smash it a long way down and been the long hitter in the at the bar but that doesn't win your paychecks or tournaments. We're gathering here at the New South Wales Open. Beautiful day. A few clouds in the sky but the sun has been out. You want to get your sunscreen on? That's for sure. was in a tie for second. That'll be a bogey. Just a mishap on his second shot into 18. This is a group, group approaching our commentary position, Paul. They'll be walking past us any moment. Got a large gathering here, as you can see, with the final group. But Lucas Herbert and our leader Jason Scrivener, a seven-shot leader, and uh, what a com what a comfortable, what a comfortable walk, Paul Gow there, just giving a hello to some of the members of that group and the galleries. He's the people he's been signing autographs all week as Paul Gow. <laughs> no, I have not. It was just Jason Scrivener. I seen him this morning and, and last night before we left, and it was his turn to win. And, and you don't know when it's your turn, Bruce, to win. And um, you know they've all turned up to see possibly one of our next best players. He's got, he reminds me of Adam Scott's golf swing. It's nice and compact. There's a lot of good things that, that you like about this young man's golf swing and the way he, his demeanour around the golf course. Um, he just goes about his business, just so professionally like. And, you know, it was a matter of time, 28 years of age. You know, his golf coach was out here this morning, Gary Barter, just having a look. And I don't think Gary had to say much because I think it was right where it had to be. Yes, he's been the quiet achiever, really, on the European tour over the last few years, has he? hasn't set the world on fire, but uh, I keep mentioning these platforms that he's been building each and every year. He's currently 103rd on the European tour money list. Doesn't sound all that impressive, but he's retained his status for next year, irrespective of whether he plays Hong Kong next week or not. I'm not 100% sure on that, but uh, I agree with you entirely. I think he's got that sort of demeanour about him and the golf swing of an Adam Scott type player. And now that he's got this first win behind him, then I think uh, the world's his oyster. He's going to be a very, very impressive player for Australia in the years ahead. 
Yeah, he just goes about his business. You know, you see him on the putting green. He's got his putting drills that he does, and he just is a step to it. And you know, the young players, the Travis Smith and Harrison Endicotts, that just have joined the professional ranks this week. They're the guys you need to look at. Now, I know he's only 28 years of age, but he worked it out you know, pretty early on in life. And I, it makes me think of a Jason Day or an Adam Scott or a, uh, a Brett Rumford, who really, they, they sorted their, you know, their profession out early. And as we're looking at young Lucas Herbert here, a couple of years as a pro. Jeez, oh, I really liked his decision to take that iron off 18. Um, he's not trying to overpower the golf course. He's had 24 birdies in the first three days. We can see why. It's probably he manoeuvred his way around the golf course and then let his length take over. Like 12 today where he made an eagle on a par four, he then he then took advantage of his length. So that's what the long players and long hitters have got to do is just map their way around the golf course and use that when they need it. Yeah, exactly. To, to be able to access it when you need it, to, to have it there. Uh, so you can attack, you can both attack and defend on a golf course. And as you said, we've seen it already with the scores that uh, eagle at the par four early on on the back nine. And currently in uh, outright second position now because of the fact that Ben Eagles bogeyed the last hole. So uh, good solid two putt from a middle of a green type of shot. Although I'm probably Lucas is seeing it a little differently. <laughs> probably trying to wanted to try to birdie the last, but he's uh, appears to have second place in his in his hands provided he can find a way to par this hole and I think Paul this is not much more than a, an eight iron in here. Yeah probably even less I would say with the length these guys are hitting a pitching wedge 130 metres plus these days. Well he can go left to right here we've seen right of the pin it's probably the best and feed it back to the hole always hard to get back to this hole but we've seen a few over the green Well, what a magnificent iron shot from Lucas Herbert. He will tie up second spot. I'm going to back him in from there for a two putt at worst. And he knows the caddy on the bag. He's pretty happy with that. Daniel Nesbitt here, coming in from a much better angle. Trying to get it all the way back to this pin. Only flicking in a wedge here. Well, a lot of work on that. I expect Daniel Nesbitt to play well next week. He's a fine, fine young player. That's a beautiful shot. Take that to, to go to 12 under and a top 10. Daniel Nesbitt, if he knocks that in. And importantly for him, Paul, he's currently outside the mark as far as retaining his status on the PGA Tour of Australasia. A top 10 finish here might go close to getting the job done as we look at our leader, our seven-shot leader, Jason Scrivener, with his shot to the 18th. 24 under par. Looking for his first win. We expected something aggressive. And that was it. It'll feed back to the edge of the green. He'll enjoy this walk. We've got great crowds out here at Twin Creeks following him in, walking next to him. Is that our future star? Is that one of them? Without a doubt. Well, what a fun walk this is going to be for him. He'll get the accolades of those surrounding the clubhouse and those behind him on the fairway. And his first win as a professional. This might have won the occasional pro-am and things like that, but in terms of four-round events, this is uh, his most significant, well, certainly his first win, and goodness knows where this might take him, Paul. We've talked all week about the class of the player and what a comprehensive and emphatic win it's going to be. And keep in mind, Bruce, that the field this week for the New South Wales Oving was top-notch. It had some of the best players in there, um, from the older players, um, from Peter Lonard, David McKenzie, they're really good players, but there's just a plethora of players that are really good players that are playing exceptionally well at the moment too. So it wasn't like he, he beat a field that, that, that weren't that, that good. It's a cracking field. 
all the volunteers out here in the orange shirts for the New South Wales Open. We always thank them for their time and effort. They do it for nothing. They may get a shirt for it. A game of golf here at Twin Creeks, maybe on the Monday. But pulling all that together is a big job. So thank you to all the, the volunteers and officials that, that have brought this together this week. And a great setting, this, uh, this golf course has really held up. Um, Jason Scrivener has obviously been at his best to shoot 24, maybe 25 under. <laughs> <laughs> you think? He certainly has, and uh, he didn't obviously have access to the Dubai World Championship in Dubai this week, which really consisted of the leading 60 players on the race to the uh, race to Dubai money list in the European Tour. So, took advantage of an opportunity for breaking his schedule to come back and play this event, and I'd say he'd be delighted that he's done that because it's going to lead to that first most important breakthrough win, Paul. Well, it's always the hardest, isn't it? But then you start to think about your second one after you've got your first one, and it, it, he'll he'll treasure this. This will be on his mantelpiece for a long time. But his name goes to some of the uh, next to some of the best players ever to come out of Australia. So Jason Scrivener for one last birdie, amongst which has been many throughout the course of the week. Well. Just got that one a little hot. He'll mark that. Um, Lucas and Daniel will putt out first. And the champion will hopefully have the last putt. Well, we've, uh, we've seen over the years, that's the protocol, isn't it? Irrespective of what happens with these guys, they'll leave the final stage to Jason Scrivener. Lucas Herbert here currently needs a two putt for outright second. So move from his left to right. It'll be a nice way to finish. Well, what a good week. It's absolutely been a birdie a thon for him. He's mapped his way around the golf course nicely. Six shots behind the winner at this stage, of course, depending on what Jason Scrivener does with that final putt, but a very good performance by Lucas Herbert. Paul, he really hasn't played a lot this year. Hasn't really had a lot of places to play, but uh, he's a talent. There's right from his amateur days through to his early days as a professional, he's always shown a tremendous amount of game, tremendous amount of power as we look at. Daniel Nisbet looking to finish off what has been a very tough day for him. But uh, I think we both have agreed that the, that was a learning curve day for here at the New South Wales for Daniel Nisbet. Yeah, we'll see bigger and better things winning up in China. He certainly can win, then we know that. And this man, Jason Scrivener, 28 years of age, out of Western Australia, plays the European Tour. Kept his card there this year, him and Wayne Ornsby, good friends. And for a par, and a round of 65. There he is, Jason Scrivener, the 2017 New South Wales Open champion. He adds his name to a list that includes the likes of Norman Von Neider, Jim Ferrier, Frank Phillips, Greg Norman, Ian Baker Finch, Peter Thompson. They're all there, the Peter Lonards, the Craig Carries. Now Jason Scrivener joins that very exclusive list of winners of the New South Wales right, Open. Dude. A first time winner and a very a deserved winner too, Paul Gar. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we, we like the way, that, well, I definitely like the way he goes around his business. He he just goes about his business, unassuming, flies under the radar, but this could be, you know, the event, well, it, it certainly will be the event that leapfrogs him into bigger and better things and, and the confidence piece that he takes out of here. He went out there and shot 65 this afternoon in the final group, leading the golf tournament. We expected him to win. Well, he certainly did that. And now he will head into 2018 with a lot of confidence. And, well, there's still a bunch of events to play. There he is. It's definitely his girlfriend who occasionally caddies for him. will be excited for him and his family and friends. She don't always get a win. It was a great effort. You know, four birdies in a row on the front nine, four, five, six, and seven. Sort of set up his day, bogey at eight. That really set up his round and said to the other guys, well, come and catch me now. <laughs> and a good setting here on 
18. He went ahead and then birdie 10 and 11. So that really took it to the to the rest of the team, that's for sure. And birdie's on 15, 16. And part 17, 18. Well, great setting here at Twin Creeks Golf and Country Club. Out in the greater west. Only some 5 or 10 k's from Penrith. Only 30 minutes to the Blue Mountains. So, an easy access out of Sydney to come out here and play. And as uh, Tanya Davies, the New South Wales Minister for Mental Health, Ageing and Women, who joined us earlier on, was saying, you know, just such a great thing to be able to bring an event of this standing into this part of the western part of Sydney and uh, uh, an opportunity for golfers in this region to be able to get to see these class players in action. And Twin Creeks, what a venue, Paul. What a tremendous golf course. Uh, you know, we've been blessed with some rather benign conditions this week and some outstanding greens which have allowed some of the scoring we've seen but it's still been a provided a very good test and i don't think there's any doubt about it that the best player of the week won i know that's easy to say when a player's <laughs> won but when he's won by the margin that he has done by six shots then it tells the story of a man that's been very much the deserved winner and an emphatic champion yeah without a doubt the golf course has really held up nicely for the week you know you get that from the players it's it's everything that's said in the locker room is the key you know everything behind closed doors and i was in the locker room this week and the you know the players just loved the golf course um and and might i add not every golf course do the pros like the one who <laughs> wins it or has a top 10 well they love it but sometimes they don't like it and uh, i can honestly say the players have really really enjoyed this golf course this week and graham marsh take his hat off he's uh, he's been a great player and a great ambassador for australia but he's more than that, he's become one of the best golf course designers in the world. Um, and I might be a bit biased, but I really enjoy playing these golf courses. You know, I play Terry Hills a lot when I'm in Sydney, and I play out here a fair bit. And there's just there's a lot of good golf courses. And it was definitely one of the highlights of the week as Jason Scrivener's play and you know how he handled himself down the stretch there was quite impressive. And Paul, we were lucky enough to be sitting alongside that Kellen Nagel trophy earlier on. And uh, what a fitting name to go on that trophy, Kellen Nagel. Such a great champion of Australian golf, 1960 Open champion and winner of just so many events in this country and around the world. A runner-up at the US Open to Gary Player back in 1965. Just a legend of the game and uh, just a classy individual too. We saw his son, Bruce Nagel, out here earlier on. and. Uh, Some of the yeah. names on that trophy that Jason uh, Scrivener's name is going to join soon, really. Uh, who knows where he might go? We talked at the start of the week about just where this winner might go in the years ahead, and there's no doubt that Jason Scrivener now with that win under his belt, Paul Gow, that uh, he's got an opportunity to perhaps go on and challenge some of the deeds of those great legends that have gone before him. Absolutely. Well, we see seven under par. We get to 24 under for Jason Scrivener. You know, it, it was the round of the day that was shared by Blake Windred there. And the amateur takes out, well, sorry, the joint amateur championships here with Chris Crabtree at 14 under par. And Jamie Arnold, what a good week he's had. It's all about confidence and growing that confidence. Minwoo Lee, he won under par for today. One of the ones to look at in Daniel Nesbitt. Uh, well, we're impressed with his game, aren't we? Absolutely. And uh, a man that'll be very happy with his game this week, Paul Gower, is our winner, Jason Scrivener. And he's down with Liz Almasian. Liz. Jason, congratulations. It's your first winner as a professional. You must be excited. Yeah, um, I don't think it's really sunk in yet. But, um, yeah, just happy with the way I played today and in, in, in the pressure. And, um, yeah, just, just pretty happy. Well, you looked in command all week. You just won by seven shots. Did you have any nerves out there? Yeah, I did. Uh, I mean, yeah, I, th I think I just, the way I was playing, I felt pretty calm and, um, yeah, felt in control of my game. But there's always definitely some nerves, especially I haven't, I haven't won yet. So, um, yeah, happy, very happy. Well, you've been working hard with Gary Barter at the Australian Golf Club. Have you been working on anything different or what have you been working on? I think I've just been persistent the last couple of years um, with Gary and just getting getting better each year and, uh, yeah, it's finally paid off. Yeah, and it's unfortunate you can't play the Australian 
Open next week, but you're playing in Hong Kong. You've played well there before and you've just had this win. Are you confident going into the week? Yeah, perfect build-up. Um, love Hong Kong, so unfortunately I can't play. The, I'd love to be playing the Australian Open, but uh, I'm going to go to Hong Kong and then come back for the Australian PGA. So, yeah, looking forward to the next couple of weeks. Yep, and so you're playing the Australian PGA. Once that's done, what are you playing after that? I'll be hanging up the clubs for a couple of weeks and, um, yeah, not, not thinking about golf, but I've yeah, got two more, we two more weeks of the year and, uh, yeah, hopefully I can get a contention on one of those as well. Yep, and what are your plans for next year? Just uh, continue playing on the European Tour and, uh, yeah, hopefully get a win out there next year and, yeah, build, build from this. Well, congratulations again. Enjoy celebrating tonight and good luck next week. Thank you. Cheers. Well, thank you, Liz, and uh, it'll be very interesting the next week, Paul, just to see how this win impacts on Jason Scrivener. There might be a positive or a negative reaction next week, but you have to think that in the years, or the months and the years ahead, this is going to be a very positive thing in the golfing life of Jason Scrivener. Well, it's been a fun week. Uh, you know, great event again, the New South Wales Open. He got his name on the cup. You know, let's all, all eyes looking to the Australian Open next week. It's, uh, it's just been a fantastic week. We've seen some young players that have come along that we haven't, you know, sort of seen before. And that's what these golf tournaments are about. And New South Wales Open, the Golf Association have put on a great week uh, with an opportunity for some young player to come along and put their name on that cup. Yeah, we've seen a lot of new names, a lot of old games. Paul, it's been a delight to work with you over the last couple of days. We hope you at home have enjoyed the coverage, the live streaming coverage of the New South Wales Open from the Twin Creeks Golf and Country Club here in London in West Sydney. Look forward to seeing you next time. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. We might start with the prize presentation ceremony. Before I do that, my name's Stuart Fraser. I'm the CEO of Golf New South Wales and will be your MC for this afternoon's presentation. I would like to acknowledge uh, some dignitaries here. Um, we have the Honourable Tanya Davies, MP, Minister for uh, Mental Health, Ageing and Women. Welcome. We also have uh, Councillor Ben Price, who's uh, representing uh, the Mayor and Penrith City Council. Welcome to Ben. We also have uh, representatives from the PGA who have Simon Butterley, who's the General Manager of uh, Tournaments at the um, PGA Tour Australasia, and David Barker, who's the Executive Officer of the New South Wales PGA. Welcome. 
and another very special guest indeed, the designer of this wonderful golf course, Graham Marsh. Welcome. I'd also like to acknowledge uh, many of the major shareholders and directors of Twin Creeks Golf uh, Resort here and Golf Club, and also the management, um, Grant Martin, general manager. Uh, welcome to all. I stand here uh, on behalf of the board and management of Golf New South Wales, very proud. Very proud that the, the tournament we've just hosted uh, has delivered um, some great golf for one in Western Sydney, um, but secondly to have the support and the number of uh, people out here today and over the four days of the tournament has been absolutely sensational. We, we thank you for your support and we look forward to uh, you coming back in the future to see more great golf. Obviously these tournaments uh, don't happen without a lot of thank yous and uh, I'd just like to acknowledge uh, certainly the support. Well. Thank you. The support of the New South Wales Government and Destinations New South Wales. Uh, they've shared a vision with Golf New South Wales to build the New South Wales Open back up to what it once was, which was uh, one of the most prestigious golf tournaments in this country. And uh, thanks to the support of the government, we're well on the way to doing that and we look forward to working with them in the future. We've had a lot of major sponsors who also contributed, uh, none more so than, than Penrith City Council. And Ben, if you can pass on to your fellow councillors uh, our gratitude and thanks for your support, not only financial, but the way that you've uh, promoted this event uh, throughout Penrith City has been wonderful and uh, that's part of the reason we have so many people here today, so thank you. Numerous sponsors which I'll, I'll mention because they're, they're all very important to the, uh, the future of this tournament and uh, a big part of why we've offered such a, a good prize money amount of $400,000. So Don Green Engineering, Worrells, Lexus of Parramatta, Celestino, Drummond Golf, AEI Insurance Broking, Rebel, Accolade Wines, Hurstville Private Hospital, Southlands, Pegasus Print, Clubs New South Wales, Sky Sports Radio, CCA, Lion, Van Leeuwen and Celebrations. We thank you very much for your financial contribution. Yeah. We'd also like to recognise the efforts of uh, our charity partner for this event, which is Diabetes New South Wales ACT. Uh, we've formed a, a really important partnership with Diabetes New South Wales. Um, what they do is very... Uh, uh, it's wonderful in this space and uh, our golfing demographic fits it perfectly so uh, we thank you for supporting their charity throughout the tournament uh, with donations at the car park and also through the various activities. Strong Creek's uh, Golf and Country Club, uh, the biggest of thank yous. Uh, this is the first time we've held the event here. Um, it has just been uh, wonderful to come to a course that has been prepared so wonderfully well. Um, we've had support um, through the volunteer network of not only members but residents. The Orange Army that stands behind me, they're only a small part of the actual volunteer component, but they've, uh, they've rallied, they've done a fantastic job, and your shareholders and directors and all your staff and management should be very proud of the event you've put on. Thank you. So the PGA, thank you for your uh, support with the event. Uh, as we share our vision with you to grow the event, you produce once again a field of top quality uh, players. And uh, you've just got to look at the scores on the scoreboard to, to show that you've uh, some witnessed some world-class golf here over the four days. And certainly lastly, but not leastly, uh, to my team at Golf New South Wales, uh, we've been working uh, probably a year long on this event. I'd like to acknowledge the efforts of Graham Phillipson, who's our General Manager of Golf, and his team. Uh, they've really worked hard over this whole, uh, whole year and whole week <laughs> to deliver what's uh, been a very, very smooth tournament for our from our end, so thank you to, to Graham and his team and, and all my team at Golf New South Wales. Okay, it's now my pleasure to uh, call up Councillor Ben to say a few words on behalf of Penrith City Council. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I'd like to give a special welcome to our distinguished guests, the Honourable Tanya Davies MP, my uh, fellow Councillor, Councillor Bernard Bratusa, Simon Dudley, General Manager of PGA Australia, and of course Graham Marsh, the course designer. 
In representing council on such an occasion, I'd like to acknowledge the unique status of Aboriginal people as the original owners and custodians of the lands and waters, including the land and waters of Penrith City. Council values the unique status of Torres Strait Islander people as original owners and custodians of Torres Strait Islands and surrounding waters. We work together for a united Australia and a city that respects this land of ours, that values the diversity of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander cultural heritage and provides justice and equity for all. Council is thrilled to have hosted uh, the state's premier golf championship here at Penrith. Uh, it's been a great tournament and congratulations to all of those who have participated. I'd like to thank Golf New South Wales for choosing our city for this event, Destinations New South Wales for its support in bringing the New South Wales Open at Penrith and the management and staff and volunteers at Twin Creeks, Twin Creeks for their professionalism. We're fortunate to have this wonderful facility in our city. It's a good fit for Penrith. We're home to a wide range of world-class sporting venues and attract a diverse range of national and international competitions. To those that travel to Penrith for the tournament, I hope you had the time to explore our wonderful city and its many attractions. And for those of you who didn't get a chance, I hope it's uh, shown you enough for you to come back and uh, have a return visit. Uh, congratulations to the winner uh, and best wishes to all of you for the upcoming events and tournaments. Thank you very much. So. Thanks very much, Ben. It's now my pleasure to call to the microphone the Minister. Honourable Tony Davies, MP, to say a few words. Thanks, Stuart. Well, good afternoon, everyone. It's an absolute joy to be with you on such a momentous occasion. To have Golf New South Wales open here in my electorate of Western Sydney to witness an amazing victory by Jason. Uh, it's your maiden victory, and that's extra special uh, that it actually occurred right here in beautiful Western Sydney. Congratulations to you. You deserved it. Put your hands Events such as this couldn't happen by themselves and I know we've heard already a list of sponsors and partners uh, who have come together to deliver this vision and I'm proud to be a part of the New South Wales government who not only is looking at investing billions and billions into the key essential services, roads and rail, hospitals and schools, but equally is looking to invest and to deliver experiences in our sporting, in our cultural and our recreational opportunities. And to live here in Western Sydney and to, to witness such an event occur, a uh, professional event uh, of immense uh, condition here at, at the grounds, uh, the weather, I did have a lot to play with the weather, you um, can thank you later. Um, it was an outstanding result for everyone involved and uh, I do want to pay my, my huge thanks to Golf New South Wales, to the PGA, to every sponsor that's come on board. Uh, to, to David, to Wang, thank you very much for your vision, for your partnership, for your collaboration in delivering, uh, again, opportunities such as this. And to the Orange Army behind, volunteers from this footprint, thank you. Um, you provided an, an ability to, to carry this event in such professional standards. So thank you to everyone who's come to witness and especially to all these young faces. We always have to have a vision for the future and it's wonderful to see this place filled with young people and young faces. So keep dreaming you young people, have a look at these, these men here, they're only a few years older than you. One day you could be sitting up here with your hands on this amazing trophy. Keep dreaming big and it's a pleasure to be with you this afternoon, thank you. Thanks very much, Minister. Okay, it's time to give out some prizes. The first prizes we're going to give out is for the leading amateur for the tournament. And this chopped and changed all afternoon, but uh, it ended up being a tie between uh, two great young amateurs who, uh, as the Minister mentioned, I'm sure have a huge future ahead of them. So if they could both come up, Minister, if you'd like to come up to present medals. To Blake Windred from New South Wales and Chris Crabtree from Queensland with a 14 under par total. Okay, now to the runner-up and champion. I'd just like to acknowledge, firstly, before we present uh, these prizes and acknowledge the, the champion to go on the, the coveted Kelnagel Cup here next to me, 
Uh, we do have um, relations of Kells in the audience and, and came today. So I'd just like to acknowledge Bruce Nagel, the son of Kell, and grandchildren uh, Alicia and Gavin Nagel. Thank you for, for turning up. And so a runner-up, but wouldn't, uh, you wouldn't think you could shoot 18 under par and, and be a runner-up in a championship like, like this. But um, unfortunately for Lucas Herbert, that has happened. Um, but congratulations on a wonderful tournament. Uh, so a runner-up with uh, scores of 66, 67, 67 and 70 for an 18 under par total, Lucas Herbert. To our champion for the 2017 New South Wales Open and whose name will go into this very coveted trophy next to me with rounds of 64, 69, 66 and 65 for a 24 under par total, Jason Scrivener from WA. Jason, we'd like to hear how you did it. It's your first professional win. You must be absolutely over the moon. Yeah, really, really happy. Um, speechless at the moment. Um, yeah, finally happened. Uh, firstly, to Twin Creeks. Um, golf course is amazing all week and um, pleasure to play. So uh, thanks very much to Justin Doyle for all his hard work. And um, yeah, thanks very much for those beautiful greens. To the to New South Wales, um, the government, thank you very much uh, for helping out this week and putting on a great event. Uh, to the PGA, Australian PGA, um, always a pleasure coming back to Australia and playing their tour events. Um, to all the volunteers this week, um, a tournament like this can't run without the volunteers, so um, thanks very much for all your help. <laughs> to my Kenny Rants, um, Thanks for all your hard work and putting up with me the last few years. Um, so it's nice to nice to finally get rewarded for it. And um, yeah, thanks very much. <laughs> to all my um, family and friends at home, my girlfriend, um, again for putting up with me. You know when I'm away, and uh, yes, yeah, I know it's not easy. Um, so thanks very much, and um, yeah, really appreciate it. To Lucas and all the other winners, well done. Um, great work. And um, all the best for the next couple of weeks. Um, yeah, I'm speechless. So thanks very much, everyone. Uh, safe travels. Well done, Jason. I'm sure we wish uh, you and all the other pros that played this week uh, best of luck for the Australian Open next week. Um, we mentioned volunteers. They, a lot of them are behind me here, but uh, there's also another huge... Um, a group of volunteers, there, the scorers, there's rules officials and uh, thank you to, to each and every one of you who have put in time and invested time into, uh, into the New South Wales Open. We're, we're very much appreciative. Okay, uh, we're going to hear now from Simon Butterley, who's the General Manager of Tournaments at PGA Tour of Australasia, to say a few words. Thank you, Stuart. Uh, the Honourable Minister Davies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Well, what an amazing week. The New South Wales Open is such an important tournament on the ISPA tender, PGA Tour of Australasia. The opportunities such tournaments provide to our professional golfers and elite amateurs is absolutely crucial to their development and allows us as a collective industry to keep producing stars that will go on to the international stage and do us proud. We're also tremendously fortunate to see our stars regularly come back and play on our tour. And there is no doubt that as the New South Wales Open continues to go from strength to strength, we will see more and more of those stars playing here at Twin, Creek, Twin Creeks in the future. And speaking of stars, Jason, congratulations on your win. Uh, amazing golf. You played tremendously well. And best of luck over the next couple of weeks. The continuing growth of this tournament cannot happen without investment. And to the Government of New South Wales and Destinations New South Wales, 
We cannot thank you enough for the commitment you have made and will continue to make to this tournament. This region is about to go through some huge changes and we also thank Penrith City Council and Mayor John Thane for having a commitment and foresight to put its support behind this tournament. The New South Wales Open has found a new home here at Twin Creek, Twin Creeks. Every player has been raving about the quality and the conditioning of the golf course. And to the course superintendent, Justin Doyle, and his team, sincere congratulations on providing a first-class course that will not be out of place on any major tour anywhere in the world. Excuse me, it's a bit windy here. The owners and the managers of Twin Creek. Thank you for your hospitality this week and we look forward to seeing the outcome of the amazing plans that you have for this already outstanding facility. So Dave, thank you. <laughs> Finally to Golf New South Wales, to Chairman Andrew Thorpe, CEO Stuart Fraser and also a special mention to Bruno Bratusa. Thank you for all of the hard work that you and your team have done to get this tournament back up to the status where it deserves to be. PJ continues to work closer and closer with Golf New South Wales, and not only this event, but also the New South Wales Senior Open Championship that was played a few weeks ago at Perguna. We will do all that we can to help you continue to grow this great tournament, and we look, you, look forward to a great future working together. And to you, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming to, quit to Twin Creeks today. I hope you enjoyed watching some world-class tournament golf. We have some amazing talent here on our tour, and no doubt you will enjoy watching them again over the next two weeks at the Emirates Australian Open and the Australian PGA Championship. Thank you, and safe travels home. Thanks very much, Simon. I can mention we have witnessed some wonderful golf, and a big part of the, uh, the purpose of why we organise this event is to provide our very best uh, amateurs throughout New South Wales and the world uh, an opportunity to play in a tournament against, uh, in, in many cases, their peers. Uh, with this tournament, we had 12 amateurs make the cut, which is a fantastic effort. It shows that the game's in a good space. I'd also like to acknowledge uh, our amateur visitors that came, that came from Japan. Thank you, you should be very proud of your efforts. And uh, we look forward to actually having you back here next year. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes the ceremony. Um, please, we'd like to see you here next year. Uh, as we look to grow this event through uh, not only government but local business and uh, certainly your patronage is very much appreciated. Thank you. Yeah, it is. We're just going to do some VIP ones.